Today on Basic Bytes, a tutorial showing how easy it is to create new D64 or G64 disk images on your Pi 1541 directly from BASIC on your Commodore 64 or 128. If you are a Pi 1541 user who has been walking your SD card back over to your PC each time you've needed to load it up with additional blank disk images, then you have been doing things the hard way. <laughs> Greetings, it's JC at Basic Bytes. I am the proud owner of a couple of different models of the Pi 1541. As you are probably already aware, this is a cycle exact emulator of the original Commodore 1541 disk drive and one of the best peripherals that you can invest in for your Commodore 64 in 2022. If you are interested in seeing more of the hardware side of things, I recommend you also check out my video on upgrading my Pi 15410 to a 3A+. However, there is nothing in that video that is in any way required viewing for what I'm about to do today. Once you own one of these nifty little devices, the question quickly arises, how do I create additional blank disk images when I need them? Although files on an SD card don't quite carry the same thrill as opening up a fresh box of blank diskettes back in the day, you nonetheless are going to need them to store things, be it downloads from a BBS, or programs that you write, or even new designs that you have created in Printmaster Plus. Yes, that last bit was indeed a shameless plug for another one of my recent videos. As it turns out, the best and easiest way is simply to instruct the Pi 1541 to create a new blank disk image directly from BASIC. That is what I'm going to be demonstrating today after observing that many Pi 1541 users probably aren't even aware of this feature because it isn't at present documented in any obvious place. There are also two other ways of getting blank disk images on your Pi 1541, which in my opinion are far less efficient, but for completeness I will briefly mention both of them right now just to get them out of the way. One of the other two and in my opinion less efficient ways of creating new disk images is found here in the options.txt file which configures your Pi 1541. Here we see that Alt N creates a new disk image. This of course is not referring to the Commodore 64's keyboard where there is no Alt key, rather this refers to the fact that you can plug in an external keyboard and monitor to monitor and control your Pi 1541. However, that functionality does not exist in the firmware for the lesser powered Pis such as the Pi Zero. And even if you have a more powerful Pi, if you are like me, you have no interest in dedicating the desk space necessary to your disk drive having its own monitor and keyboard. And even if you do have a monitor and keyboard plugged into your Pi, it still isn't your best method of creating new disk images because as we see in the next portion, names are formed automatically based on the auto base name, such as auto name 001, 002, etc. Which means that after creating disk images using this method, you still need to go back and rename them all to something meaningful if you want to remember which files you put on which disk image. This is however still a much better option than the other other way of getting new disk images onto your Pi 1541, which is what was told to me when I asked one of the vendors that actually sells the Pi 1541 hardware the following question. If I am not using an external keyboard on my Pi, is there anything I can press on the Pi or on the Commodore to create new disk images? 
The actual advice that I received from that vendor was that I should use an emulator such as Vice on my PC to create blank disk images, and whenever I needed blank disks on my Pi 1541, I should take my SD card to my PC and copy more blank disk images onto it, and then take that card back and put it back into my Pi 1541. I mean, you can do that, but no thank you. Towards the end of this video, I will point you to the document in which I found the correct information, as you may wish to read it for your general interest. Okay then, so how do you create disk images from BASIC? The first thing that you need to understand is that your Pi 1541 is not always emulating a disk drive. Rather, it is constantly being switched back and forth between two very different and distinct modes of operation known as browser mode and emulation mode. When you are clicking the little buttons on your Pi 1541 to browse through the various files and folders on its little OLED screen, that is browser mode. In browser mode, there is no disk drive emulation, but some basic commands will still work in a limited way. For example, my Pi 1541 presently does not have a disk image mounted, but if I do the load string comma 8 to load the directory, the command works, and if I then list the directory, I actually see the directory that I'm in on the Pi 1541, not the directory of a disk image. If I push the button on the Pi 1541 to mount any of these disk images, the Pi 1541 will then kick into emulation mode, which begins full cycle exact emulation of a 1541 disk drive with that particular disk inserted. When I unmount the disk image, the Pi 1541 kicks back into browser mode. In browser mode, you have commands available to you for doing things such as making new folders on the SD card and, you guessed it, telling the Pi 1541 to create a new disk image. I have switched into an empty folder on the Pi 1541 in which we are going to create some new blank disk images. I am now going to type an old-school Commodore DOS command, which anyone who has used any sort of 1541 for any length of time is probably rather familiar with. We are going to open channel 15 to device 8 with a secondary address of 15, which tells the disk drive that we want to open the command channel, comma, and then between the quotes we put our command. I am now going to type the letter N, which specifies the new command. This is, of course, the command that formats the disk in the drive, but just stick with me on this. Drive number is zero. It's always zero. That's optional, but good form to include. Then we put a colon. We put the name of our disk. We'll be very creative and call it disk, comma, a random two-character ID for the disk. Let's go JC. And just to clean up, we will then follow it with a close channel 15 command. Now, if I had a physical 1541 disk drive with a diskette inserted, this command would format that floppy disk. And similarly, if I had a disk image mounted on my Pi 1541, this command would format that disk image. However, when this command is run on the Pi 1541 in browser mode, it instructs it to create a new blank disk image of the name that you have specified. On that note, fair warning, if you are using this command to create new disk images, be very certain before you run it that your Pi 1541 is in fact in browser mode. If you have a disk image mounted and you run this, you are about to format that disk image. So now as I hit return to run this command, the Pi 1541 takes just a second to make this disk image and automatically mount it. 
If we now look at the contents of the directory, there we have it, our new blank disk dot D64. If I unmount the disk image and call up the directory, we can now see the disk.d64 in the folder that was previously empty. There are a couple of tips that go along with this, as well as one serious limitation of the new command, which I personally would love to see addressed in a future revision of the Pi 1541 firmware. Firstly, even though we simply specified a disk name of disk, it created disk.d64. D64 is the default new disk type, and if you would prefer that it create G64s instead, then you need to change the new disk type option in your options.txt file, which we previously took a look at in this video. And secondly, because constantly typing open 15,8,15 gets very tedious, I do recommend having a fast loader or freezer cartridge, which allows you to abbreviate the sending of DOS commands. To be very clear, the fast loader itself will not work in browser mode, but the DOS command shortcut will. I personally recommend the Final Cartridge 3. Don't program without it. I presently have mine plugged in, and this allows me to simply type DOS with a quote in order to issue a command to the drive. I will be using this shortcut for the remainder of the video. Now to demonstrate a limitation of the command that you should be aware of, I'm going to create a few disk images consecutively. First, I'm going to create a disk image called test1. Next, I'm going to create another disk image called test2.d64. And finally, I'm going to create a third disk image called test3.g64. Now, if we examine the contents of the folder in which these disk images reside, something interesting happened. So despite specifying .g64 at the end of the third disk name, we got d64s right across the board, and the third file name is test3.g64.d64. Therefore, at present time, it seems that it is impossible to use the command line to override whatever you have set as the default new disk type in your options.txt file. Out of curiosity, I went to the Pi1541 GitHub and I looked at the source code for the IEC commands. I only gave it a cursory looking over, but it seems that the logic to create both D64s and G64s is already present in that file and in this command. However, the way the logic is prioritized is that it first takes whatever the new disk type is set to, then it checks if you have added that extension, and if you haven't, then it adds it for you, then it proceeds to create a new disk image of that type. This is why the Pi 1541 was intelligent enough not to name the second file test2.d64.d64, but we still got a D64 on test3. My humble feature suggestion for a future version of the Pi 1541 firmware would be to restructure the logic in the new command such that it prioritizes any extension that the user specifies above whatever the default new disk image type is set to. In other words, if the disk name ends in .d64, then create a d64, else if the disk name ends in .g64, then create a g64, else append whatever the extension is for the default new disk type, and create a disk image of that type. My own personal workaround for the occasions on which I want a G64 file is to use the copy command, which also functions quite well in browser mode. For example, and keeping in mind that the new file name goes on the left-hand side, I can type 
new disk dot d64 equals test one dot d64 and the Pi 1541 will make a copy. If we now load the contents of this folder, here you can see that the test1.d64 that we made a few moments ago has been copied over into newdisk.d64. Thus, all I do is I make sure to keep at least one blank G64 disk image on my Pi 1541, and then I use the copy command to make a copy of it whenever I need a new blank G64. Of course, that's still not as ideal as it would be to be able to make both file types with the new command, because if it's not in the folder that I want it, I then have to employ additional IEC commands to move the disk image around to its final destination. Nevertheless, it still does save me pulling the SD card and taking another trip back to my PC. In conclusion, I'm going to leave you with a document of useful information. This is the Pi 1541 GitHub, which houses the source code for the project, but also contains something of great interest to the general user. Here, if we click on the Docs folder, we see it contains one document entitled IEC Commands, and if we click on that, lo and behold, all of the IEC commands that are supported by the Pi 1541 in browser mode are documented here. This includes the information that the new command will create a new disk image. I think the reason why we have an information disconnect such that even vendors don't know about it is because in order to find this, you essentially have to go to the GitHub, and the GitHub, by and large, is only going to be visited by the small collection of people who are actively looking to see the source code. Here on the Pi 1541 homepage, there is a section on how does Pi 1541 differ from SD to IEC, in which it is mentioned that the Pi 1541 implements minimal SD to IEC commands. Then, further down, when it explains that the Pi 1541 is in browser mode upon boot, it again repeats that the Pi supports very minimal SD to IEC commands. This main page does not elaborate on exactly which SD to IEC commands are implemented or what exact form that implementation takes, but nor does it need to. My feeling is that if these small bits of text indicating minimal SD to IEC commands were simply linked back to the document of information that we just saw on GitHub, that would be more than sufficient to allow many users, such as myself, to very easily find all of that information. In the meantime, if you found this interesting or entertaining, please like and subscribe to Basic Bytes for more. We are less than 50 subscribers to go to hit our first 1,000 as I film this, and according to my analytics, the majority of those who are watching my videos are not presently subscribed. So if you like what you are seeing and would like to see more, I would very much appreciate it if you hit that button. And as always, thank you for watching.